The philosopher Robert Kane's strategy of grounding libertarian free will in undetermined, torn decisions is vulnerable to the criticism that it fails to overcome the argument from luck, according to which, if a critical moral choice goes one way versus another due to randomness, then we cannot hold people responsible for the consequences that follow from their random choices. Note that in Kane's grounding of libertarian free will in undetermined torn decisions, there is no higher governing basis for making a choice in a torn decision such as Van Inwagen's thief's decision, deciding to steal and then stealing the cash just happen. Had he decided not to steal from the church box, then not stealing would have just happened. Note that for Cain, the important indeterminacy happens at the moment of choice, not before it. This means that people cannot bias the chance outcome toward the morally superior choice with their wills because even if they could, their decision to bias the outcome one way versus the other would itself be subject to the argument from luck. Criterial causation offers a way out of the argument from luck. Remember, criterial causation offers a middle ground between determinism, where things cannot turn out otherwise, and utter randomness where what happens occurs for no reason having to do with our agentic wishes. For example, if the criteria that need to be met are, he's an American male politician, you might have thought, Donald Trump, in part just by chance, but if I could have rewound the universe to the moment where I specified the criteria this time, you might have said, Jimmy Carter. Both answers fully meet the criteria that I set. The outcome was not determined because your answer could have turned out otherwise, but it was not utterly random because it had to be an American male politician. Now, consider a self-forming decision like making a New Year's resolution. We make a decision that we need to better ourselves in some way. We might consider various possible resolutions, say, to be more honest or more kind or less greedy. And once we've chosen a good New Year's resolution, we can set about accomplishing our goal of reforming ourselves. The result of such a decision is not solely a matter of chance or luck because a good New Year's resolution would have to meet our criteria for a decision that would improve us in some way. Unlike cases of torn decisions like Van Inwagen's thief or Kane's businesswoman, where the decision to steal the money or not, or to help the person in need or not, just came down to present luck, in the case of criterial decision making, there is a higher but non-determinative governing basis for making a choice. Yes, that the resolution ended up being, say, to be more honest this year rather than to be less greedy this year was a matter of luck in the sense that the first proposal passed the threshold for adequate satisfaction of integrity-enhancing criteria first, but it is not an utterly random outcome like choosing to steal the money or not, as in the thief's torn decision, or choosing to help someone in need or go to the meeting, as in Kane's businesswoman example of a torn decision. Under criterial causation, the choice is not utterly random because it had to be an integrity-enhancing resolution. It is also not determined, breaking any chain of sufficient causes that might undermine moral responsibility because a different integrity-enhancing resolution might have won out. The regress is broken by adding indeterminism, but the luck argument is broken by forcing any choice or action to meet criteria set by the agent. Kane's account is vulnerable to the luck argument because there's no basis for choosing one way or the other. And so one set of motives is just randomly favored over the other. On my account, the integrity enhancing criteria specified by the agent imply that whatever resolution ends up being chosen was willed and was not simply a matter of luck because the decision or choice had to meet the agent's criteria. Yes, there is randomness in terms of which New Year's resolution will win, but there's not randomness at the level of the basis for choosing one option over another, as in Keynes and Balaguer's undetermined torn decisions. This kind of contingency is almost everywhere you look when you look at life closely. Why am I married to this person instead of that other one? Well, perhaps I turned left that day just by chance instead of right. And had I turned right, I never would have even met her. On the other hand, the outcome was not utterly random. In my case, the outcome had to be a woman who met various criteria, such as kind, 
attractive, funny, intelligent, and so on. There was no way I was going to marry a cloud or a tree, which might have happened if my decision had been truly, utterly random. How does this kind of contingent yet criterial selection of outcomes relate to the issue of free will? Concerning type 1 libertarian free will, we are in part responsible for our actions because we set these criteria versus others that we did not set. And we set these versus others because of the kind of agent we are when we set them. We are not completely responsible because we are not responsible for the particular way those criteria were met, say we choose uh, this escape route versus another, because this was a matter of chance or luck. So we are responsible for choosing an escape route, though not fully responsible for the particularities of choosing this escape route versus others that we might have picked had it not proven adequate first. Similarly, concerning type 2 libertarian free will, we are in part responsible for our characters because we set these criteria for self-forming resolutions versus others that we did not set. And we set these versus others because of the kind of agent who we are. But we're not completely responsible for our characters because the initial characters or capacities we inherited were a matter of constitutive luck. And the particular way in which criteria we set were met, say we chose to be more honest for our New Year's resolution rather than less greedy, was a matter of present luck. So we are responsible for choosing to make a New Year's resolution to improve our characters, though not fully responsible for the particularities of choosing this character-forming resolution versus others that we might have picked had it not proven adequate first. But even if we are only in part responsible for our actions and characters, criterial causation offers both a grounding for libertarian free will and a degree of moral responsibility. In addition, criterial causation emphasizes that self-forming acts are not primarily the result of instantaneous torn decisions, like those of the philosophers Robert Kane, Mark Balliger, or Peter Van Inwagen. Self-forming acts are instead the result of a long-term cybernetic or error-correcting process that involves our willpower and our striving to fulfill a future envisioned self, which we might attain perhaps only after years of trying, failing, and then trying again. We, ourselves, are like the ancient sand heap paradox, according to which a single grain of sand is not a heap, nor is it a heap of sand if I add just one more grain of sand, and so on. On that account, even if we end up with a million grains of sand, it cannot be a heap of sand because no instantaneous infinitesimal increment of just a single grain could have turned that which was not a heap into a heap of sand. But at some point, integrating over all the tiny changes, we obviously do end up with a heap of sand. Likewise, with enough time and effort toward becoming a different kind of person, we can and we do become a different kind of person, even if the daily changes seem infinitesimal and of no consequence. Over years of practice, they integrate, and we have a new character, hopefully one with greater integrity. That is, integrating over long durations of tiny changes, we can succeed at willing to become a new kind of chooser. This capacity to choose to become a new kind of chooser, which I have called meta-free will, sets us apart from all other animals, I believe. It is a kind of freedom that is truly central to that which makes us human.